Would you ever have believed that the new space telescope would bring us so many groundbreaking discoveries? The James Webb Telescope has now even found an ancient structure that is home to a trio of quasars. Quasars are brightly shining phenomena inside galaxies, and they are among the most massive structures in the universe. James Webb is an extremely powerful telescope that can capture light levels so low that no other telescope before it has been able to pick them up. In practice, this means that we can now see further into the past than ever before. Since the summer of 2022, James Webb has been the world's leading space science observatory, and each new discovery is eagerly awaited. Now, the new sensation is imminent, as James Webb will study some of the oldest quasars in the universe. Quasars are a type of active galactic nucleus surrounded by a disk of gas that orbits the black hole, emitting enormous amounts of radiation. Although quasars are among the brightest objects in the universe, these objects have been extremely difficult to spot. In fact, even the newest objects of study are so far away that Webb only receives very, very faint signals from them. It is thanks to Webb's excellent technology that these objects are now visible to us at all. Thanks to the unusual angular resolution, the telescope can reliably separate the light of the quasar from its host galaxy, providing us with details never seen before. Three quasars in one structure. Researchers will now use all the technical refinements on board the James Webb Space Telescope to study three of the most distant quasars. The James Webb Telescope has four main instruments that can collect and analyze light from distant stars, galaxies, or, in this case, quasars. The near-infrared NearCam can record images in the near-infrared range. Only this new imaging technique makes it possible to capture light that is far away. The near-infrared spectrograph NearSpec is an instrument that breaks down the light of distant objects into its components in order to obtain information about their chemical composition and movement. Astronomers refer to the so-called mid-infrared instrument, which can record images in the mid-infrared range as MIRI. With this technical innovation, researchers can trace the formation of distant objects because MIRI has such a fine resolution that the chemical composition of gas and dust in galaxies and other objects in the cosmos can be determined. With fine guidance sensor, near-infrared imager, and slitless spectrograph, or FGS-NIRISS, nearest instrument for short, researchers determine the position and distance of distant objects in space. Using these technologies, we will obtain brand new measurements of quasars and the masses of their central supermassive black holes. We will know how many stars are contained in the galaxies and explore the composition of their host galaxies in detail. The quasar trio consists of J0313-1806, which already existed 670 million years after the Big Bang, and whose black hole is 1.6 billion times more massive than our Sun. J1007 plus 2115 was discovered around 700 million years after the Big Bang and is 1.5 billion times more massive than our Sun. The third in the group is J1342 plus 0928 and existed 690 million years after the Big Bang. This galactic center has 800 million times the mass of our Sun. A Glimpse into the Past when James Webb looks deep into the universe, we are actually looking back in time. The light from these distant quasars began its journey when the universe was probably still very young, and it took billions of years to reach us. When we look at objects like the magical quasar trio, we see things as they were a long time ago and not as they are today. No one knows if these galaxies still exist today, and if they do, they have moved very far away from us. All three quasars existed when the universe was less than 800 million years old. These observations give scientists the opportunity to understand more about galaxy evolution and the formation of supermassive black holes in this early era of the universe. In James Webb's images, the light from these very distant objects appears red. This effect is known as redshift. The further the light has to travel, the more it is shifted towards the red light spectrum. The visible light emitted by the early universe is so extremely stretched that it is shifted into the infrared range. And here, we are extremely lucky with the new telescope because James Webb was specifically designed to collect light in the infrared range. The quasars that scientists will soon be studying in detail 
are not only among the most distant in the universe, but also among the brightest. Not only do these quasars form around the black holes with the highest known masses, they also have remarkably high accretion rates, which means that a lot of material falls into the black holes. The enormous amounts of matter sucked in by the black giants continue to power the quasars and jets. Compared to the turnover of these black holes, the black hole at the center of our own galaxy is harmless. In the center of the Milky Way, hardly any matter is sucked in, so our black hole has neither a quasar nor does it emit violent jets or winds. In the three galaxies that Webb will study, the amounts of energy released are enormous. The streams of energy spread out in huge waves in the host galaxies and drive regionally massive star-forming regions. These outflows of energy are thought to play an important role in galaxy evolution throughout the universe. In some cases, the outflows of gas, dust, and energy are so powerful that they have the opposite effect and star formation within the host galaxy is throttled or stopped completely. Scientists suspect that the outflows of some very active galaxies are even effective far beyond their borders. Clouds of gas, dust, and elements are redistributed over large distances within the universe and can thus feed other galaxies or even initiate the formation of new galaxies elsewhere in the universe. When did the universe become clear? Quasars are bizarre objects that virtually feed on infalling matter, creating fantastic streams of radiation. The light from a quasar at the center of a galaxy can shine brighter than all the stars in its host galaxy combined. Some quasars emit jets and winds that reach far beyond their galaxies. Researchers now want to know what role this galaxy activity played during the era of reionization, when the hazy universe slowly became clear. More than 13 billion years ago, the universe was still very young and probably nowhere near as clear as it is today. We remember that in its early days, the universe was nothing more than an extremely hot soup of gas and dust. Only slowly did particles come together to form atoms and eventually molecules. The universe was probably still cloudy for a very long time. Neutral gas between the galaxies could have made the universe opaque to some types of light. Researchers have so far painted a picture of how the neutral gas in the intergalactic medium became charged or ionized, making it transparent to ultraviolet light. This period is called the era of reionization. But what led to reionization and the clarification of the cosmos? Scientists are now hoping that Webb will be able to answer all these questions. The era of reionization is considered one of the most important frontiers in astrophysics. Research teams want to use quasars as background light sources to study the gas between us and the quasar. The gas observed in this way absorbs the light of the quasar at certain wavelengths. Imaging spectroscopy can be used to visualize absorption lines in the intervening gas. The brighter the quasar is, the stronger these absorption line functions are in the emitted light spectrum. It should then be easy to determine whether the gas is neutral or ionized and scientists can use this data to see how neutral the universe was at that point in time and what percentage of the reionization process has already taken place. The team will use the previously introduced near-spec instrument for their studies. This breaks down the light waves into individual parts and provides precise information on elements or metals. In the world of astronomy, all elements are metals. A distinction is made between light and heavy metals. In the early universe, the heavy metals hydrogen and helium very probably played a predominant role. These elements were already involved in the formation of the first stars and were distributed by young galaxies through outflows. Within galaxies, the explosions of the first stellar giants also caused a redistribution of the metals, which were then available to new stars. Parts of the gases moved out of the galaxies and migrated through the intergalactic medium. Studying such processes in the early universe up close would be a real treat for scientists all over the world. So we can really look forward to what this new study will reveal about the oldest and largest known quasars. What else has Webb discovered? James Webb already made a splash at the beginning of his career. Six galaxies appeared in a photograph that are so old and so large that they shouldn't even exist. Webb depicted the galaxies as fairly compact and disc-shaped, with surprisingly well-defined spiral arms and central bars. This means that these galaxies 
which existed only a few hundred million years after the Big Bang, are very highly organized and structured. The light in these images could also originate from very brightly shining quasars. This would mean that there are also supermassive black holes at the center of these extremely old galaxies. But this is precisely where researchers are faced with a previously unsolvable puzzle. How could supermassive black holes exist so soon after the Big Bang? Researchers are hoping for more answers from James Webb, just as they hope that this miracle telescope will soon bring us news of the first Earth-like exoplanets. James Webb is not only searching for the oldest light in the universe. The telescope's mission also includes the thorough investigation of hundreds of exoplanets. For the first time, it will be possible to examine the light waves around distant planets in great detail. We will then know which of the planets with the highest Earth similarity index really resemble our home and are possibly inhabited. James Webb has already demonstrated his excellent capabilities with an analysis of the exoplanet WASP-39b. The diagram shows the molecular components of the atmosphere in great detail. This world, which is around 700 light years away, showed astonishing similarities with our Jupiter. Except that WASP-39b is significantly hotter. Traces of carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, potassium, sodium, and water were found in the atmosphere. WASP-39b is therefore certainly not a potentially habitable world. Webb next looked at some planets from the TRAPPIST-1 system. Of the seven planets orbiting the main star, some are considered Earth-like candidates. The seventh planet, TRAPPIST-1g, is most likely enveloped in a thick hydrogen-rich atmosphere and is a so-called Hycean world. These planets consist mainly of water or hydrogen, but are not necessarily life-friendly. Thanks to Webb's analyses, TRAPPIST-1g turned out to be a hot soup of sulfurous oceans.